Girls Tube. This is Julia. This and this is the Stitcher Girl podcast. And it's February. No, it's not February anymore. It's March. March the fifth, Saturday, March the fifth. I'm in Nova Scotia visiting my parents, and I thought um, I would do a floss tube again while I'm here because I really like the lighting set up. I had meant to come back to you all much sooner. <laughs> very much sooner um, after I had so much fun doing the podcast in December and then January we were plagued with snowstorms every weekend I'll put in a picture so you can see all the snow and then we had a bit of a lockdown here as well at the end of January so we weren't supposed to really leave the area where I live in the Moncton area so that meant I wasn't coming um, across the border to Nova Scotia. And so I started a new job in February. So so things have been moving, been moving. And um, I'm now a full-time hospice LPN. I'm very proud of that. And I really enjoy it. Yes, it's, you know, it's tough. It's tough helping people at the end of life. Um, it's hard, but I think it's, um, we kind of create this atmosphere where we're celebrating life and we're also helping them at the end so they don't suffer. So I really like that I'm a part of that, a part of that team that's taking care of people near the end and to help them on to, um, on their way to that next that next journey where, wherever it is so yeah so that's what I've been up to and um, so now I work like four days on four days off and I work two days and two nights so I'm not working night shift all the time anymore so I'm starting to feel a lot better I'm getting used to the sun I'm actually like waking up in the morning now and uh, without an alarm clock and I don't feel nauseous so yeah, so so that's all been good. The the job thing is going well. I am so happy because I was in a very um, depressed state at one point about um, working in healthcare and where I was working. So now things are uh, things are really good. I what else can I tell you? I had made notes to do a floss tube and then it didn't happen. So I'm just going to recap a little bit about Christmas. Um, my brother did visit from California and uh, that was really nice. He was then, he ended up staying here for two weeks. So that was great for my parents. And um, some of you may remember I made him a, an ornament. It was from a Just Cross Stitch uh, ornament, Christmas ornament magazine. And it was a Kathy Barrick chart. It had a hen pulling a wagon that had Santa Claus in it. And I gave that to him and it was like a, a pin pillow. And the uh, finishing fairy dropped by and helped out with that. And we used the crushed walnuts. And that was the first time we had ever um, done a pin pillow with them before. And we were really happy with the end result. I'll put in a picture. And then um, I got I got a Christmas quilt for Christmas, so that was pretty cool. So I'll put in a picture of that as well. Anyway, it's very enjoyable, very quiet, very laid back. Um, because I was in between jobs, I had time off, so I was able to be here um, with family. So that was a nice change after what we've all been going through the last couple of years. The snow, I don't even know, like the snow was crazy. It was January, it was like every weekend and it was a type of snowstorm where like you had to dig out your car. It wasn't just like a dust stain. And it got to the point where <laughs> like I, I didn't have a proper shovel. And um, there's a big parking lot behind my apartment building and there's a snowblower guy that comes through the night. And sometimes, like, if you have to get up early in the morning, you might, you're going to have to get up extra early and get out there and shovel because he's probably, the snow is 
blocking your way. You may not have much on your car, but to drive out, there's a bit of a bit of a snowbank. Anywho, so I've been lucky. Um, the, um, the neighbors in the building, they've been sharing their shovels with me. And I finally went out and bought a shovel. And since then, I don't think it snowed. So go figure. I don't know if that, that's, there's any connection or not. <laughs> kind of funny. So. Things are good. I've been stitching a lot more too. And I've been kind of getting into everything. And I have a pile of stuff here on the table. I realized that I never, uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff I never showed you the last time we were together in December. Um, so there's going to be some haul that's really like I've had for a long time, but I still think you might like to see it. Have I been watching Floss Tube? I have been keeping up with Floss Tube. I've, I've been really, I guess, focusing on the, the whip parades and the kit parades. Those are fun to watch. And also they enable, which is good and bad, I think. Um, yeah, so it's it's been great to see because some people, like I might have some of the charts and to hear people talking about what they're going to use, what fabric or whatever. And then that's got me thinking like, oh, I think I can do, oh, you don't know. So lots of brainstorming, um, kidding up, watching some floss tube. In February, I got really fixated on the Olympics, specifically the figure skating and all the drama that was involved with that. And um, the dance event was my favorite because I think at least the top 12 teams, like anybody could have placed... I mean, they all seem to be so amazing in their own right. It's hard to pick and choose who should be first, second, or whatever. But that was tons of fun. And then, of course, um, the Russian figure skaters provided us with their Russian figure skating dramas. You don't need to watch soap operas if you follow figure skating. The Russians give it all to us in spades. So I was a little fixated on that. I was doing some stitching watching the Olympics, but I... I found that it was better to stitch on a project that had um, like fill in as opposed to, you know, a lot of counting and stuff. And uh, so you'll see some of those projects that I worked on. I think one thing that I wanted to, um, it's kind of like business from the last, uh, business from the last meeting, the last floss tube, was I wanted to show these two fabrics together. These were the two fabrics that I talked about. One was color and cotton, one was pitcher and plus, and I couldn't remember the name of the pitcher and plus fabric. And it is shale. And it is the one that has a plummy gray cast, pinky tone to it. And to me, when I received my color and cotton, the cauldron smoke, it made me think of it. But when you put them side by side, they're really not that close. But you could tell they're some kind of cousins. They're cousins. Anyways, so I just wanted to clarify that because I was very annoyed that I couldn't remember names. And I'm sure you were very annoyed too. Like, Julia, what the hell? Girl, make a few notes before you start these things. Anywho. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to put these back in a bag. Sorry, crinkle, crinkle. And, um, yeah, so I just wanted to review that. I also am going to include a Mother Mary segment now to show you some of her stitching since I'm here. And she got, I kitted this up for her for Christmas, The Chubby Bird by Jeanette Douglas. And because she hasn't stitched in so long, I got her some 25 count, the uh, Country Vintage Mocha. And I did pick out some hand-dyed flosses for her to play with because we love a good variegated thread. And this is her Chubby Bird. And it turned out wonderfully. And um, 
Yep, so she had a lot of fun with that. So she's going to finish that now somehow. And this is something from the archives. This is something she did a million years ago, like 2003. Probably it was a chart from a magazine. And these are ceramic buttons. And this was done on Ada. And I think it's an oatmeal Ada because it's got that fleck in it. But that was something she did back in the day. So there you go. Look, that was our Mother Mary segment. She is, um, she's watching curling and dad's downstairs watching hockey. So somebody might yell out at some point. Okay, so we have finishes and I need a sip of tea. I did get the Peacock Cypher finish, just Nan. I didn't get all the beading done because I got a little burnt out. Once I finished the stitching, I was like, I did a bit of beading and I was like, I can't do this anymore. You have to go to bed for a while. So here we go. It's, it's long and skinny. And it was cross stitch. There was the odd like mosaic stitch or Smyrna in there. But let's look at a peacock because I this peacock's got its beads. I don't know how well you this is um the fabric is a mystery. I think it's like a picture of this plus Lugana. It was a remnant piece that I got. Uh, because you count. And the cipher part, of course, is all these letters. And you had to figure out, well, which letter of the alphabet to put in to um, give you the verse. And I did figure it out because I'm brilliant. I'm just joking. And because I had put, I think you might remember I put 2020 on it. Well, I figured out a place to put 2021 at the bottom. So that was that. So that was... I got to finish the beading on that, but it was just driving me crazy. Then I pulled out another sampler to work on in January and it, it had a date on it as well. And I just about lost my, like, Julie, you have to stop putting dates on things. Um, so this was Merry Christmas. Alba Stitcher, Amanda, was doing a stitch along with these Christmas samplers back, I know, was it April, May, last year? And because I had this one, I thought I'd start along with her. And I finished it. It's so cute. It's so small. I did it on 36 count flax. And um, the date was on there. 2021. So I finished it in January. At the end of January 2022. And I figured if you finish it in January 2022, it's still fine. Yeah. And I changed the um, the C. I gave it a different color for Cherub and the W for Wellington, my kitty cats. Anyway, so that's really sweet. So I have, there's four altogether of those Christmas charts. And I have three of them now. So another big start in January was my New Year's Day start. Which was... The beautiful, the stunning, Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. I'm using most of the called core, called core, called four threads. And I am using the, um, I think it's Legacy, that's what it's called. Picture this plus. And this is where I am so far. I only worked on it in January and then I put it away. Here we go. So I got that top band done with all those flowers in the pair. I've been fiddling a little bit with the colors. Um, like I didn't have Weeks Caper, but the um, Classic Color Works Camouflage was very variegated. So I've been using that where it says, where it calls for caper as well. And then the Lexington Green. That color, is it Lexington Green? Gentle Arts Lexington Green. 
I just ordered some lately, and um, when I got it, I was very surprised. It was like this, it was, it didn't look green at all. It was very grungy. And so I used, um, I, I went for my blue green. So this is Funnel by um, Classic Color Works. And it's like a 502 DMC. Oh, I showed that to you backwards. That was brilliant. That's why I didn't look right. So this, the, the band here, that's like the sawtooth. Yeah, I, um, I used that instead of the uh, Lexington green because it just looked the, to me. Because it actually looks greener here in this picture. And I sometimes really like the look. If I really like the look of the photo on the front cover, then I'm going to fiddle with the colors. So, yeah. So, that was fun. So, I think I'm going to go back to this in April. And what else? I had another start in January because... You might recall this sampler, the Isabel Sinclair sampler. It's a Scottish sampler by um, Giulia Manfredini. Um, Giulia Punti Antiqui Designs. And Nikki Noodle, Australian floss tuber. She's doing this too, which is kind of cool. I was maybe going to pick her brain about colors. So I did start it a little bit. This is on Filbert, which is a Legacy Lidding Access Commodities, 38 count. I'm not feeling the yellow. The yellow for me, I find it bright. And I don't know. I find it bright. I haven't stitched on it in a while. I mean, I don't think it seems as bright as it did when I first started working on it. But I wanted to get some of that purple color in there as well. I'm using the DMC. The, um, was it Silken Thread? Is that the name of the, the Thread Gatherer? It, the called for is worth Thread Gatherers, and those are beautiful. Very expensive, but lovely. Jeanette Douglas uses a lot of them. And um, they're lovely, but I just decided to go with the DMC. And, um, but that yellow, I don't know. I don't know about the yellow. Let me know what you think about the yellow. Because when you look, I put all my bags to the side with all my colors in them. Maybe that wasn't smart. There we go. Because when you look at the colors on the floss, like when you, you know, when the floss drops, I think it looks good, but when I'm stitching with it, I don't know. And then there's this purpley color as well that goes in there. So I don't, I don't know. I changed one of the DMCs, the green. I made it a shade lighter because where I was only using one thread on 38 count, I didn't want it to look, from a distance, I didn't want it to look like it was almost like black, if you know what I mean? So I fiddled, fiddled anyways. And this is a sampler that I was um, doing. It's just glasses. Um, for my grandmother. And her sister. Her sister was Bella. My grandmother was Margaret. And there's an Isabella and a Margaret on there. We don't really know the provenance of the sampler. Though there is enough to tell us that it is Scottish. And um, Sinclair's on it. So I was going to put Bella Linton and Margaret Sinclair. And I started at the end of January. Because that's when my grandmother's birthday was. And I worked on it for a few days. So I'm like this yellow. I'm not feeling the yellow. So maybe the yellow is fine, and I just, you know, I'm too particular. So that's that. So maybe I'm going to reach out to Nikki Noodle about that. Anyways, okay. So there was that, that, that. 
Then also in January, I started a witch. And it's called, um, they're little witches. This is Witch of the East by the Laurel Witch, which is Laura. I believe she lives in Ottawa. She's Canadian and she's done all these witches. So if you're on Instagram and you see all the witches, it's her. She just did a, a Ukrainian one not, re not too long ago. And she did a, she did a British one. So... This is a Witch of the East. And this is on 28 count. Because I was going to finish it off kind of like a doll. So this is fabric that came from the Owl Forest Embroidery people. Um, for that, um, what's it called? The, uh, the Wizard of Oz, that free sampler that they had. This is the fabric that came with it. And I don't like this fabric. So I. Um, but it's nice and thick. And it's good for something that you're going to make as a doll. Or a pin. Like when I mean a doll. Think pin pillow. But in the shape more of her. Now I'm just coming down here to do her skirt. She's holding a lantern. And I gave her that Anna Green Gable feel with the red hair. And there's like a lighthouse in her skirt. I'll put in a picture so you can see. But it's, um, she's very sweet. And you might be saying to yourself, Julia, 28 count, does that mean you're stitching with two threads over two? And I, yes, I confess, I am stitching two over two. I don't know what's happened, but I've been really enjoying it lately. I don't know what's happened. Maybe because... I'm not as stressed. I don't, I don't know. But I've been really enjoying the two over two. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Then, in January, I have to, I'm kind of doing this by month. Then in January, a most, a most wonderful thing happened. It was like, I can't even, it was like Christmas all over again. And you know how Hands Across the Sea, they have these exclusives with shops. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to, I've got to. No, you don't need it. I've got to, I've got to. No, you don't need it. I play in this game for a few weeks. And then I finally pulled the trigger and got Rosa Ada Featherstone from the Hobby House in the U.S. in New York State. Isn't she a stunner? I love the colors. I haven't decided yet if I'm doing DMC or I know that Amy Mitten has done overdyed silks. Is this a project worthy of silks? Tell me below. I think it might be. I love the colors. There's purple, there's pink, there's orange, there's green. This is my color palette. I love it. I'm so excited. And these coil-bound books, they are the bomb. I love them. I love them. Wunderbar. Fantastic. I love them. And I thought that my color and cotton eggnog that I got, that would be great. That would be great for this piece. Or Vintage Country Mocha, too, would be another good one. But, I don't know. I think, I have a feeling. Yeah, I think, anyways. I think a lot. So, that was very exciting to get that. That came in January, and that was so exciting. Because January was a weird month, and I was like, I literally, like, everything. Like, I just, like, sat down and was like, oh. I just, I got so excited. Now, now, what was I going to tell you? I forgot to show this. This is my blast from the past. And you're probably going to know right away that it's Shepherd's Bush. It says 2003 on here. Now, the reason why... 
I brought this out to show you was just not how amazing it is. But it was done into a banner. And I'm thinking that the Merry Christmas sampler that I showed you, I might do a banner instead of framing it. Same thing for the Peacock Cipher. I might just frame them if I can find these nice, this hardware, whatever it's called. Get it in the right size. I think this was called the Orchard. I'm not sure. But it says, um, Elder and Quince, Blackberries and Slow, Wee Little Currants. 2003 oh my god where is the time gone anyways that was so much fun and of course the finishing fairy took care of that <clears throat> so that was something I wanted to show you so I, I got out dreaming girl in February because that was something that had filling I, there was filling in to do and I could work on her during the Olympics so this is where I'm at now on this, this beautiful fabric. I'll show you the picture first. This is, um, you know, how it was released in part. So um, this one is up to summer. There's winter that comes in here. So it's spring, summer, fall, and then winter here at the bottom. And then this is where I am. And I've been using Sulky in some places. The pink flowers at the bottom, the purple flower up near the hair, the gold, the acorns and the leaves that are hanging. And there's a red house on the top. That's actually a variegated, there's some purple in it. So, um, I've been using some sulky in this. But, you know, that hair is, it's a lot of freaking hair. Can I just say that? It's a lot of freaking hair. Anyway, so I was working on that, and that's something like I can take to work and stitch on night shift. The, um, yeah, the filling in part, which is nice. And, um, yeah, I just love, I, I know, I love all those Barranas with the faces. They're just beautiful, but I can't stitch them all. I'm not planning on it, but they're beautiful. And I pulled out His Eyes on the Sparrow in February. Because I started it last year in February. And I'm doing this on Vintage Country Mocha 40 Count. This is where I am. Now remember I had the, uh, the error extraordinaire when I started to stitch the band across. I stitched the band went right into the house. So the house is like six stitches, stitch threads too low because I miscounted the cartouche, the, the green cartouche here. I miscounted it. So that put everything down low. So I've decided to just leave it, take out the band, and I'm gonna move the, 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 the band of writing, the band of writing here, I'm gonna move it down. And that vase, that's gonna get, I'm gonna make that go lower. And as you can see, I, I didn't count that side house. The window is all bigger than it should be. But you know what? That's what happened back in those days. They didn't. Things weren't always symmetrical. So that house color is not what's called for. I did it in... Um, I came across a skein of Williamsburg blue in my mom's threads. And I'm like, what are you doing with that? That's an over -dyed. I'm taking it. So that's what I did. So 
So, and I'll probably go light on the window color since the house is since the house is dark. So the house is really going to stand out here. So maybe that'll create a an illusion with the eye so you won't realize it's six threads lower than it should be. Anyway, so that was fun. And what else I've been doing? Well, oh, you know what I did? I totally lost my mind. I totally lost my mind in February. It happens. The Cruel Goblin, which is apparently a phenomenal, a phenomenal stitching store in Australia. They have something called the School Girl Sewing Club. And Julia went apoplectic about this. And signed up. So it's a club that's going to come out four times. And the designers for this iteration of the club is Needlework Press, GGR, Reflet de Soie, and Sovereign Samplers, which is new to me. Um, so I was, again, apoplectic. I knew I couldn't say that twice. The Cruel Goblin School Girl Sewing Club. And you're like, Julia, you joined a club that's in Australia? Well, yeah, why not? What's the big whoop? Because the Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar are very similar. So to me, that always makes it's not crazy to shop from them. Yes, the shipping maybe can be a little wackadoodle, but the because our dollars are very close, like the American dollar and the Canadian dollar are like on different planets. The Canadian dollar, the British pound, different planets. So um, I just figured out like when you figured out the cost, what was included, it it made sense. It it seemed very reasonable, very reasonable for what I was going to get. And the charge included shipping that I've paid for. And it's a 36 count linen that I'm going to get. And it's supposed to be like two projects that come. And it's going to come with all the kit and caboodle. So it seemed very, very reasonable. And um, yeah, so I went nuts so. In February I lost my marbles maybe that was January I lost my marbles anyways I lost my marbles then the world is upside down again and there was a couple of days I couldn't stitch because I was like with everything that was going on in Ukraine so I noticed on Instagram people were Um, promoting Ukrainian designers and their Etsy shops and so forth. So I bought some designs from Ukrainian designers and I did start one. I started two actually. This one, now the reason why I like this one is there's a European chocolate bar and it's called Milk and it's a purple wrapper with a cow on it and she is called the Karovka Milka. So that is the milk cow. And um, she's just cute. She's so sweet. So I found this. The designer is, I can tell you this, Ekaterina Gafenko. And I got this from her Etsy which is a completely different name. I'll put it in somewhere so you can so you can see. The only thing is though, I don't know if you can if you buy something from them now, if you can do PayPal with the uh, with the sanctions that have been going on. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Maybe not, maybe. 
I know some of the Etsy shops have been closed too for the Ukrainians, so. Um, so this is what I've done so far. This is oh, a mystery. I don't know if you can see there's some purple in it. Yeah, you can see it there. This is, um, I think it's a, a picture of this. Plus, it's a Lugana. So I've been working on that. And then, this is kind of funny, but I found a St. Patrick's Day pattern on a Ukraine site. And it was a pretty cursive script. So that's why I got it. I'll fold it. I think it's better to see. And this one, you're using one of those variegated DMCs, the variations. So that's something, too, that's fairly easy to do at work. And both these pieces are on 32 count, and I'm doing two over two. Like, I don't know who I am. But, yeah, so it's been fun to support and through a very difficult time. Um, I know here um, in my area in Moncton, the Ukrainian community are gonna be having a, um, like a donation day next weekend where people can drop off all kinds of supplies and then they're gonna send them overseas. I know lots of places have been doing it as well. So this was um, one way I could help out some Ukrainian stitchers. I was happy to do it. Um, yeah, I can't even, I can't even get my head around what's going on. There's another um, designer. I think it's a, she's in a Katerina too. She's one of the well more known ones. I think on Instagram there's, um, she's got like, is it Baba Yaga designs and very folksy looking folk tale um, creatures and stuff. And I'll put in a picture of the one I got from her. It's got owls on it. So I got that. Ooh. And so what else did I get? I went to the Stitch Bug yesterday just to have a chat, a very innocent chat. So for me, I have two local needlework shops. I have the Stitch Bug, which is a brick and mortar, and then I have Seashell Stitching, which is online, um, but they're like a five minute drive from my house, so I can order from them and pick it up quite easily. And they also do, um, they'll have like a pop-up shop events and stuff. So, yeah, so seashell stitching you can order online. Um, the stitch bug, you can call them and place an order. And I am spoiled to death. Because before we had one called Because You Count. And it was like... I think it was like the it was the go-to cross stitch shop, embroidery shop in the Maritimes for like years, and I know there's some other like online businesses and stuff in the Maritimes that sell things, um, yeah. But to have an actual like, I'm lucky. I can just go in and look at the floss wall and like just have so much fun picking my colors. And, you know, looking at fabric, doing everything on site. I mean, there's something about seeing everything and picking it yourself in person. Um, so I'm very blessed that way. But that doesn't stop me from ordering online, too, from other places, like for Nashville Needle Market. Um, these shops, they're not going to go to a needlework market. It's really expensive for anybody who's not in the States to go to Nashville, you know, depending on the size of their store. Like the store in the Netherlands, the Handwerk Boutique, she goes, but she, she's like, a, she's, 
she's one of the few shops I think in Europe so she does quite well so I guess it's feasible for her it makes sense same thing the Kroll Goblin goes I mean traditional stitches in Calgary they are by far the largest needlework shop in Canada and they do business all around the world so they're in a position to go to market that's why I found the expos. They were great for the smaller shops, the needlework expos, because they could go online. It was like a virtual expo. They could go, they could get some FaceTime with designers. They could meet them. They could order things. And then um, they didn't have to like fly somewhere to do it. You know, that was great. Except you fall, you know, that was a great thing. But at the same time, there are drawbacks. Like one of them is some designers won't ship to Canada. So that means you have to wait for the designer to send their patterns and charts to the distributor, which could be Hoffman or Yarn Tree or whoever it is in the States. Then that's how my local shops get these patterns and charts, um, and supplies, but, um, you know, it is, it can be frustrating for them, because I'll just give you an example where there was something that I had wanted from Expo, and my LNS ordered it for me, but the thing was the designer didn't ship to Canada, so she had to wait for it to go to Hoffman, then she placed the order with Hoffman, and I only got it maybe just before Christmas. And Expo, what was it? Was it in August, September? And then this designer was having Black Friday sales on their website. And I could have got it at a cheaper rate PDF. But I was waiting for the hard chart because I was trying to support my LNS. So... That's a little frustrating, I think, for the smaller shops that um, and those that aren't in the U.S. It can take longer to get things for your clients. And the clients can because so many designers nowadays, they will sell PDFs. Like Stacey Nash has started selling PDFs on Etsy. And, um, you know, you can just go to Etsy and download it, right? And I... I like having my LNS. I like being able to go and look at the floss and the fabrics and everything. So for me, that's kind of frustrating. And as if I was a shop owner, I would be very frustrated too. I would I would almost say to the designers that maybe they shouldn't be selling PDFs of, of their charts for like the first three months after they've been released, you know, give the shops a chance to get it in their shops. And then later, after it's been around for three months, then they can put it on their Etsy shop or whatever and sell their PDFs. It's, um, yeah, if we, if we want the brick and mortars, we've got to probably have to fight for them a little bit, eh? So, speaking of brick and mortar, I went to um, the Stitch Bug and I picked this up. This is a Misty Purcell Luminous Fiber. Arts and I've always loved this one because as you know Cherub and Wellington my children and um, So I started it and I'm and I'm working on 27 count Linda It's lovely It is If I understand correctly, it's cotton. It's a cotton fabric but it's an even weave. And this is vintage country mocha. But look, this is what I've done so far. And the whole, like, it's wonderful. Like, it's very nice and even, as you would expect in an even weave. And um, this would be great for doing some one over one as well. Yeah, very nice, very nice. So this is what I'm doing so far here. The cats, but my cats, I'm I'm doing it in my kitty cat colors. 
So I picked, um, I think, Swiss Chocolate for Wellington. I'm not sure if it's the right color, but I got Swiss Chocolate for Welly. And I got Pebble for Cherub because she's kind of taupey gray. And he's kind of like a tortoise shell, but he's got black in him. So I think I'm going to do some creative stitching to kind of get them where I want them to be. How are we doing for time? Wundable. 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 Wonderful. Wundable. Oh, so now we come to... Oh. Glorious haul. I got a, I got a McDonald cup over there. I got a tea cup over here. I got my nails done yesterday. Made me feel like a million dollars. So this is a cross stitch gauge. You might have seen these before. They come from Yarn Tree. I might have got this from hand dyed from Rolanda, who's an Etsy shop. And if you see on the side, it has the counts of the fabric. So if you have a piece of fabric and it's not labeled, you can use this gauge to determine if it's 40 count, 25 count, whatever it is count. So I got that. I thought that was kind of cool. On this side, 14 count over here. What have you got on this side? 18, 22. So I thought that was kind of a cool tool. We got Stacy Nash because we love the Stacy Nash. That was one of the things that. Um, I ordered from Nashville. It was, um, excuse me, it was the Lafergie. And it's a kit. Is it a kit? No, you could get the fabric. So this is going to be the first time I'm going to have some weeks fabric, but the Spygard base. Because they use straw for that design. And I think it, I'll put in a picture because I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, so I've got these two and I think there's some more of these out there. One is summer. Is the Rose Cottage summer. This one is fall, butternut house. And did you ever notice the little pumpkins down here? It's so funny. And, um... I think there's another one. There's a winter one. Barbara Anna. We love the Barbara Anna. This one is uh, something wicked. Another Barbara Anna. I've wanted this one forever. Hello from Liz Matthews. I love this one. This is the one actually that um, Liz doesn't ship to Canada. So my shop had to wait for it to go to Hoffman. And then I still hadn't received it in November. And she was selling the PDF on her website. And I'm like, this is a little crazy. So, yeah. Needlework Press, how can you not like this? This was done on perforated paper. Here. Perforated paper. The original. That's fun. It's a little wackadoodle. Violet's Blue. This was a re-release. This is old. Like, this came out last fall, I think. I got the threads because, you know. Honeysuckle Manor. I saw this and I... Plots, let me tell you. Beautiful, beautiful book. And the honeysuckle borders. Like, I can't. I can't. I'm going to, like, lose my mind. It's just so freaking beautiful. And um, I don't know if you saw the needlework market. The, um, the Blackbird. The Blackbird releases, there's another book, and there's a couple of charts. Beautiful, 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 beautiful charts. 
the other things I pre-ordered, oh yes, it was a Plum Street sampler. And it was um, one of these market exclusives. And it was, um, this is the day. And it's got this big brick house. This is the day that the Lord has made. Remember the song? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember that one? Well, if you went to Sunday school or Bible school, let me tell you, you know that one. So that just kind of like, but that brick house, oh my God, it's beautiful. That one, and something else to do with a cat. Dirty Annie's, a Dirty Annie's. I don't know Dirty Annie. Is she really dirty? I don't know Dirty Annie's. And anyways, that's coming through Top Knot Stitcher. Abe. And then last but not least, these were things that I ordered from, oh, this is something I got from the Stitch Bug. This book, because it has, everybody loves it for, wait for it, here. Where is it, Julia? Oh, the Cardinal. The Cardinal, everybody loves the Cardinal. And the other one, well, the, the little stockings, everybody loves the little stockings in this book, but the, um, the big sampler, the Christmas garden sampler, that's what's in this book. I don't know if I'm going to make it. That doesn't really speak to me, but the Cardinal speaks to me and all the cute little stockings. Very popular. Okay, so what I got from this ditch bug was I'm in this kind of like St. Patty's Day mood. So I got this for the Pineberry. Every so often they'll come online and they'll say, hey, we're placing an order with Hoffman. Is there anything you want? And then you go to the Hoffman website and you look and see what they have. And um, so, yeah, I've always liked these um, St. Patty's Day patterns. So now I have them. Very exciting. And then I wanted to get the other Christmas samplers from Blackbird. So I got the Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. And then this came by accident, but I decided that it was meant for me. Blackbird. This was part of their um, Beatles series that they did. And um, I think this is one of my more favorite ones from the Beatle collection. I really do like that one. And I really got to learn how to do this ruching, ruching on the edge. I don't know. Can you see it better on the back? Maybe. The ruching. I got to learn how to do the ruching. Anyways, so I think that was it. Like, oh, and then in Amherst today, coming through Amherst, and one of the most exciting things for me, anyways, that's happened in Amherst in a bazillion years is Mrs. Pugsley's was open today. Mrs. Pugsley's is a quilt shop. And she's in this old, old, old historical building. The old, was it the post office, the customs house, whatever. It's, it's big and old. Anyways, so she's got a quilt shop in there and she was open today. So I went in and I found some Tula Pink, Tula Pink charms. So I got two of them. So that'll give me 84 charms. That'll make a quilt top. Pretty, 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 pretty bright colors. And this is the homemade collection. So there's like scissors and sewing tapes and whatever. And then I came across this Lori Holt chart. And I said to her, what the heck are you doing with this in your shop? I think everybody remembers this. This was a lot of fun. And it has the... Um, now you can use this as a keychain. You can use this as a as a floss drop, thread drop, or um, um, a zipper pull. 
So yeah, so this was used with, um, um, was it the Aura Floss? So Aura Floss is, um, it's a 12 weight gauge like the Sulky. And Julie, Kansas City girl in a Colorado world, she did this, but she did it over one and it was gorge. And this one, you can do it over 25 count or whatever. And this is not vintage country mocha, but you could use vintage country mocha. This is, um, I think, some of Lori Holt's fabric. But this is a great little Lori Holt chart. So, yeah. So, that's what I've been up to since Christmas in December. And, um... Things are good for me, for me job-wise, life-wise, all that stuff. And um, it's been quite cold. We haven't had much snow since January, but it's been bitterly cold at times. Bitterly, bitterly cold. Anywho, I wish you well. I hope you're well. And um, hopefully I'll get back to you sooner next time and tell me it w what were your like favorites for market what did you order um did you see any of my charts that you liked and you want to do a stitch along there was i had talked to michelle at mama loves you gb about doing a saint david's day stitch along and like and like she was pumped and i was pumped because everybody loves a good welch sampler but it's like and then I was hoping for my Mary Morgans to come from Fox and Rabbit and was coming from Australia and they were waiting to send all the linen, you know, and they've been having problems with linen and stuff. So it's not here and that's probably okay because I don't need to start another big sampler right now. But yeah, that would have been a great thing to do. But if you did stitch on a Welsh sampler that day, awesome. I, um... I will get back to mine. I'm a little, I got a little, I think, low about what was happening in the Ukraine, and I just wanted to kind of focus on the Ukraine. So that's why I bought some Ukraine patterns. But um, I'm going to say, um, hi, Alice, in case Alice is watching, because I knew she was watching last time. And she said, when are we going to get back to, um, oh, dear. The snooty parrots, the snooty parrots, and I was thinking maybe April I might pull that back out and start working on that again. A few of us were working on it. It was Debbie Creatively Yours. Um, that was a birthday sale I think she had. You know this whole pandemic thing. I don't know. Time is like weird. I don't I just can't remember things. Um, I don't know which birthday, which year, but it was something. And I know that. Um, um, Oh, God, Saltbox Stitcher. What's her face? Carol. She just finished it. She put a push on in January, and she finished it, and it was beautiful. Just gorgeous. And I know Julie, Kansas City, the Kansas City girl in the Colorado World girl, she was making a Gilmore girl snooty parrot. She was modifying it and putting the gazebo and... To give it a girl a Gilmore Girls feel and that was super cool. So we gotta get back to the snooty parrots, I think, in April and work on that, push on that, and um yeah, so reach out, say hi. And um let me know about market. What are you getting? And I hope to see you again sooner rather than later. Maybe two weeks. Maybe two weeks. All right. You take care. Hugs and kisses. Keep safe. And um, keep Ukraine in your thoughts. Take care. Bye.